So, I know some of you might argue with that too. So, uh, we're talking about the synthesis of cholesterol. And cholesterol is a fascinating topic. Uh, it's one that has fascinated biochemists um, for almost as long as it's been known. There are something like five different Nobel Prizes that have been awarded for uh, things relating to cholesterol. And we still have a lot of unknowns about this molecule. So it's a very, very interesting uh, compound. I'm going to take you through, last time I stepped you through the synthesis very quickly, I'm going to take you through it a little bit more slowly um, and then move on to some other things, including the function and the uh, movement of cholesterol in the body, which is a very interesting uh, topic in itself. So I told you last time about how we start with acetyl-CoA and we can make cholesterol. And I said that first reaction involved a reversal of the beta-oxidation pathway using the enzyme thiolase. And that enzyme thiolase put two acetyl-CoA's together to make a four-carbon molecule called acetyl, I'm sorry, called acetyl-CoA, which isn't even shown on here. You don't need to know that. And then another acetyl-CoA came along and made a six-carbon molecule called mevalonate. Well, this figure is rather abbreviated, so I thought I might actually show it to you in a little bit more detailed form. And that's actually shown, uh, not here, but the next slide right here. Okay. So now you can actually see what I was talking about before. You're not responsible for the reactions. I'm just kind of showing you this so you get a, a picture of what is happening in the cell. Acetoacetyl-CoA, which is that four carbon molecule which results from the attaching of two different acetyl-CoA's together, um, is combined with a, yet another acetyl-CoA to make this uh, monster molecule right here, um, whose name you see is beta-hydroxy-beta-methylglutaryl-CoA. And it's this guy right here that's an interesting compound. It's called H. HMG-CoA. Okay. HMG-CoA is uh, converted uh, in a, a series of re in a reaction catalyzed by the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase okay, to make mevalonate. So this reaction uh, is the one that I said was catalyzed by uh, the enzyme that is the only regulated enzyme in cholesterol biosynthesis. And this regulated enzyme in cholesterol biosynthesis is feedback inhibited. I also said that it was, um, in fact, inhibited by uh, a group of uh, compounds known as statins. Okay. And the statins, what they do is they mimic HMG-CoA. So they bind to the enzyme, and the enzyme gets stuck binding to these statins, and it can't bind to the real thing and can't go ahead and make the pathway that makes cholesterol. Okay? So HMG-CoA, I'm sorry, the statins look like HMG-CoA. The enzyme grabs them, gets stuck, and can't go on uh, the pathway to making cholesterol. Now, if we look a little further along that pathway, we see that we've got a mevalonate, and you see a bunch of arrows up here, and there really are a bunch of arrows in going through this, this guy. But this mevalonate uh, gets decarboxylated. And that decarboxylation converts the six-carbon mevalonate molecule into those isoprenes that I was talking about. An isoprene is not really the name of a molecule, but it's a name for a group of molecules. And two of them are used to make the um, cholesterol. All right. Now, I'm actually going to spare you the names of those. You're not going to need to know the names of those. But you should know that isoprenes are the five-carbon building blocks that make cholesterol. Isoprenes are the five carbon building blocks that make cholesterol. You'll notice that their, uh, their names include the word pyrophosphate, which is sometimes abbreviated as PP. And pyrophosphate simply means that you've got one phosphate joined to another phosphate. So we thought of ADP, for example, adenosine diphosphate. That diphosphate is a pyrophosphate. Those two phosphates joined together make a pyrophosphate. Well, pyrophosphates actually uh, help reactions to move. And I won't go into the mechanism uh, of it here, but they do give an energetic component that uh, helps drive reactions forward. These, uh, and by the way, so these guys here, these uh, isoprenes that have pyrophosphate on them, are combined together to build bigger molecules. And so last time I talked about how we can take two of those fives, one of them is called uh, is one of them is called isopentanyl pyrophosphate, the other is called dimethyl allopyrophosphate. You don't need to know those names. Um, but you combine two of those together, you get a 10 carbon molecule called geranyl pyrophosphate. I think you should know the geranyl pyrophosphate. That's a 10 carbon intermediate on the synthesis to cholesterol. 
Okay, so I take two isoprene pyrophosphates, I combine them together to get geranyl pyrophosphate. Then I add another isoprene pyrophosphate, and I get something called farnesyl pyrophosphate, which is what you see right here. Yeah, so geranyl pyrophosphate is spelled G-E-R-A-N-Y-L. And farnesyl pyrophosphate is spelled F-A-R-N-E-S-Y-L. So geranyl has 10 carbons, farnesyl has 15 carbons, and you can see that we're building these guys five carbons at a time. We then take two farnesyls and combine them together, and we get a 30-carbon molecule called squalene. This guy here is a long honking molecule. And it can be rearranged into something that has a ring-like structure. OK, oh, sorry, I keep doing that. Wrong one. And so here's what squalene looks like if we twist all those bonds into appropriate places. It actually ends up looking kind of like a cholesterol-like molecule. So these guys, these bonds twist and turn, and eventually they join together uh, to make this first of what I call the cyclic intermediates. The first cyclic intermediate on the pathway to making cholesterol is called lanosterol. And yeah, that's a good one to know, too. That's got 30 carbons in it. It's the first cyclic molecule. I'm sorry? Yeah, it's lanosterol, L-A-N-O-S-T-E-R-O-L. Now, it's lanosterol that's a very odd thing. Lanosterol looks quite a bit like cholesterol. Here's lanosterol, here's cholesterol. But it actually takes 19 steps to go from lanosterol to cholesterol. And it's a very in energy intensive pathway. So like I said, the cell really doesn't want to make cholesterol unless it needs to. And that's why that feedback inhibition is very important. Okay. Well, the body needs cholesterol because the body uses cholesterol in membranes. It's particularly interesting to me that in your brain, if you look at the amount of cholesterol that's found in your brain, if you take brains and you dry all the water of them out, okay, which is a pretty good component, but you take a dried up old brain like I have, all right, you, could, you measure the cholesterol in it, cholesterol is 14% of the dry weight of the brain. A lot of cholesterol there. Yes, sir? Okay, so squalene is a, it's linear. You see there's no bonds that have been made in there to make these rings. Squalene it, uh, twists itself and arranges itself such that it makes, it ultimately makes those bonds and makes lanosterol. Okay, so that's what's happening on the way to making cholesterol. Okay, statins um, are right uh, here and this guy, uh, I'm sorry, uh, bah, bah, bah. statins are here, but there's di different forms of the statins, and it's actually the, form, the part of the statin that looks like HMG-CoA that binds to um, the uh, enzyme. I'm not going to say more about that. Okay. Now, cholesterol is also important in our body for other reasons besides being components of membranes. Cholesterol is a precursor of the bile acids. And bile acids are used in our digestive system to help solubilize fat that we eat. So we go out and eat a big cheeseburger. We got a big honking dollop of fat that's entered our, into our stomach. The bile acids solubilize that. And they solubilize it by acting like detergents. So our body is acting as carrying detergents to solubilize fat. Did you have a question, Sue? Bile, B-I-L-E, sorry, bile acids. It's bile that's stored in your gallbladder, and your body is injecting that into the, into the digestive system as it needs to solubilize fat. Okay, so fat, of course, is not water-soluble. So cholesterol is a precursor of those. These guys here are all made from cholesterol. Well, there are other things that are made from cholesterol as well, and they include steroid hormones. So steroid hormones, um, this guy here, uh, pregnenolone, is a precursor of the steroid hormones. And there are several different steroid hormones. They're not all sex hormones. 
Uh, but pregnenolone, which is the precursor here, is made from cholesterol. So cholesterol uh, ultimately uh, is turned into all these different uh, compounds. If we look at these different compounds, we see estradiol down here, which is a female sex hormone. And we see estradiol is actually made from testosterone. Okay, testosterone has a structure that looks like this. Estradiol has a structure that looks like this. Estradiol has a ring, it has an aromatic ring, and that aromatic ring is not present in testosterone. The synthesis of estradiol from testosterone requires action of a unique uh, set of enzymes known as aromatases, A-R-O-M-A-T-A-S-E-S. -E aromatases are about the only enzymes in biology that directly create an aromatic ring. Now, the interesting component of that is estradiol is a female hormone. And it is the uh, one of a class of molecules we refer to as estrogens. And estrogens um, are interesting in that many tumors are known that are stimulated on the binding of estrogen. So the binding of estrogen to certain tumors stimulates them to divide. And those tumors are, in fact, re uh, dependent upon estrogen for their stimulation to divide. So one of the types of chemotherapy that's given to people is to give them what are called uh, I'm sorry, aromatase inhibitors. And what the aromatase inhibitors are doing is preventing the formation of estradiol and thereby preventing the estrogens from being able to stimulate a tumor. So if you have a tumor, uh, one of the first things that uh, a, uh, a lab test will try to reveal is, is the tumor stimulated by estrogen? If it is, then you're going to be a good candidate for an aromatase inhibitor. OK. Let's see. Now, we're covering a lot of different things here. We turn our attention now to the movement of lipids in the body. The movement, OK? And this is going to take me a few minutes to get through. And so then I hope you'll bear with me. Lipids are mostly water-insoluble things. Fat is water-insoluble. Vitamin E is water-insoluble. Okay? A lot of things are water-insoluble. Cholesterol is water-insoluble. We want to move these things through our body, but our body's bloodstream is aqueous. So how do we move things that are water-insoluble in a medium that is mostly aqueous? Well, it turns out that the body has to do some packaging in order for that to happen. And the packaging that it does is interesting. So I'm going to step you through the pathway, and it's going to take a little visualization on your part to do this. Let's say that I eat a big honking cheeseburger, and I've got all this grease and fat that is now in my digestive system. The question is, how do I get that from my digestive system to some place that's going to do me some good? Well, this is accomplished by the packaging of fat and other lipids like vitamin E, vitamin A, the fat soluble vitamins, cholesterol, and so forth. These things are packaged up by your digestive system and placed into things called lipoprotein complexes. Lipoprotein complexes. There are several of them. And these lipoprotein complexes are just as its name would suggest. They're complexes between lipids and proteins that sort of encase them. So we can think of these as sort of balls of fat. There are several classes of them. And I'll, I'll say something about, uh, about three of them here. Chylomicrons is the first. Chylomicrons are the ones that your digestive system uses. It grabs this fat and fat-soluble vitamins and cholesterol. Whenever I say fat, I'm talking about, basically talking about lipids here. It grabs it, it packages them up in these complexes called chylomicrons. And chylomicrons travel from the digestive system through the lymph system, and then they hit your bloodstream. Okay, So from the 